So thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be with you and to share in celebrating your commencement from Virginia Commonwealth University School of the Arts. Congratulations. Congratulations actually to all of you. This is a seminal moment in your lives, of course, one for which you've worked so fervently hard. I believe it's a seminal moment in the arts too because you're going to change the arts forever. Countless times over, you're going to conceive and create something new, something wonderful, something inconceivable to the rest of us, something born of uniquely personal vision and bred of ingenious capacity. As part of the number one public School of the Arts and Design, you've worked alongside a remarkable faculty, MacArthur Geniuses, Guggenheim Fellows, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony winners, advocates and allies who comprise a dynamic and vibrant community at the nexus of creativity in the center of such a storied and inspired city. They challenged you and helped you change and you, them. Together, you have challenged and changed all of us. And I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, truly. You have helped us address what's most important in a world that can be incredibly noisy, really, frankly, vexing. You've helped us address how to navigate ambiguity, how to be resilient, how to be tenacious. And I might add, how to be brilliant. You have one of the highest graduation rates of any school at VCU, and one of the highest cumulative. <laughs> yes, it gets better and one of the highest cumulative GPAs. In fact, in fact, nearly two thirds of VCU's highest achieving out of state students are in the School of the Arts. You've taught us so many things, but you're also extraordinarily collaborative. The School of the Arts is central to transformational Middle Abroad Studio and the Pathbreaking Da Vinci Center. And beyond our own institution, Creative Vets, and the first North American partner in the International Tate Exchange Program in London. You've leveraged your creativity and your artistic practices to reduce bullying in schools, to reimagine how medication is distributed in hospitals and to reframe conversations about identity and culture. You're fueling a culture of innovation and creative ambition. You're forever changing art, design, performance, medicine, technology, and humanity itself. You could have studied in any field and you chose the arts because you recognize that creativity matters. Creativity matters everywhere there are human minds. Creativity is the most transferable skill. It's central to innovation and progress. It, could, it ignites conversations across lines of difference, creates shared experiences, inspires collaborations, and forges connections. Creativity is the universal language of self-discovery and shared connection. It is the universal language of humanity. We are human because we are creative. From Louise Bourgeois sculpting Maman as an ode to the protectiveness of her mother, to Jean-Michel Basquiat, 
transforming found objects into statements on race, class, and power. To Lin-Manuel Miranda, turning the life of Alexander Hamilton into a hip hop a cultural phenomenon. It is our capacity to imagine and then to make real. That makes us innovative, progressive, and it makes us human. Creativity in art and life gives us imagination and humanity. No, creativity is humanity. Today we make virtual reality and we transcend reality with film and fashion and music and movement. We have new media, new technologies, but a very old creative instinct. 50,000 years ago, we painted the walls of limestone caves. And 50,000 years before that, we carved delicate designs into eggshells. And 50,000 years before that, we embellished our bodies with ochre and ash. We made jewelry and adornment from shells and stones. To the beginning of humanity, our ancestors hewed stone tools and made object after object after object more aesthetic and more symmetrical and more poetic than they ever needed to be. You can cut rope with a rock, but we did it with art because we are humans. Across time and across the globe, it's the same story. Our creativity gives us consciousness and connection, and it is the universal language of humanity. The writer and great satirist William Plumer once said, and I quote, it is the function of creative people to perceive relationships between thoughts or things or forms of expression that seem utterly different. Creativity is the power to connect the unconnected. It is this lesson above all that I hope that you take with you as you walk out of this theater as an alumni and into the world beyond VCU arts. We have sought to teach you the knowledge and skills to harness your talents and empower you to boldly embrace great challenges and face a horizon of limitless opportunities and futures ahead. But I hope you never stop seeing creativity as the essence of your identity and the bond that connects us as humans. Creativity is the universal language of all of us. That was true at the dawn of humanity and it's true for us today. And it is your creativity that inspires me to believe that in this very noisy and vexing world, you will do well and you will do good. Thank you and congratulations, all of you. An extraordinary job. Congratulations. Now, it is my esteemed honor to introduce someone who speaks our universal language, not only fluently, but beautifully. Her name is Elizabeth Turk. She is a sculptor, a MacArthur genius, 
and our keynote speaker. Elizabeth turned to creative expression for the same reasons that many of us do, to find her voice and her place in a world that is sometimes unkind. She was driven to this space, and her art is not an outcome of a process to just make something, but rather to discover and to communicate who she is and who all of us are. Her art speaks to all of us because it's evocative, it's beautiful, it's interesting, it's relatable. It stirs all of us because it's complex, it's transformational, empowering. As a sculptor, Elizabeth works mostly in marble, a material, she says, connects my work to a larger story a human story, a geological story. My work carries forward more than my singular vision because of this unique history. It's a universal language. Elizabeth is a creative scholar fascinated with patterns. And you'll see some that look familiar, lace collars, Pinwheels, flowers, DNA. Although with her masterful touch, they seem weightless, fragile, liminal. She bends gravity as she folds ribbons of marvel, and the results are breathtaking. See for yourself. So I said she works a lot with marble. But from time to time, Elizabeth is also known to work in wax, clay, porcelain, glass, experimental photography, paper airplanes, and Staten Island manhole covers. A few months ago, Elizabeth's shoreline project brought 1,000 people to a California beach, each carrying a sculpted umbrella lit by an LED shaft. The lights moved together, dancing, beautifully synchronized to the world around them. It slowed us down, though, inspires us in a deeper understanding about what's possible and what's real. It looked like this. Elizabeth was born in California and studied at Scripps College in Claremont and the Reinhardt School of Sculpture at the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. She has exhibitions internationally, and she also directs a nonprofit called ET Studios, which is focused on creative change throughout the creative arts. VC Arts Class of 2019, please help me offer a warm welcome to your keynote speaker, Elizabeth Turk. Thank you, Dean Brixey. Thank you, trustees, administrators. I don't know if I have the right order to all of this. 
faculty, parents, loved ones, but especially to all of you, the class of 2019. Congratulations. Let's everybody just turn around and say congratulations. So being here in this moment is so humbling because it's your years, your resources, your commitment, your work, your money that was spent <laughs> that we're celebrating is truly your achievement today. So I kept thinking, how can my words do justice to all your efforts? For the last few months, that's been my challenge. Of course, I immediately went to Google. I Googled every possible commencement address. And I'm sure it's no news to you that this only increased my anxiety. <laughs> my second remedy was to ask friends. I really wanted their help to brainstorm. Their advice, stop, get out of it, be really careful. This is not the time to be recording words. So you can tell this was not going in a very hopeful or even a very positive direction. My third remedy, and thankfully my last, was to do some research. I read the words of Teresa Pollack, the acknowledged founder of VCU's art department. Her words, Go ahead, she said. Work as you want to work, any way it comes. These words are nearly 100 years old, and they incited her students' creativity. She also underscored the need for expression, and these are her words as well, in our age of confusion, uncertainty, and fear. These words remain inspirational. In fact, they're freeing because they're so simple, direct, honest. They're powerful to us today and in our world of confusion, fear, and uncertainty. Her words reminded me to simply start, to work and stay vulnerable because it's not to be perfectly packaged. That's okay, just see what happens. Finding expression at the pace of your own heartbeat, not from voices embedded in media or even those of treasured friends can seem impossible. It's the unplugging, setting perception and judgment aside to listen to what is valid in your own voice. This, isn't this the essence of creation, of finding the new over and over and over again? of discovering your extraordinary voice, your own voice, and allowing it to give shape to the enormity of a new shared vision. Personally, I can't get that image of Freddie Mercury out of my head. When he enters that stadium with his arms raised, vulnerable, alone, quieting millions with only his voice and a piano key, alone with the sound of a single note to begin his work. This image gives me courage for some reason. All of you have proven you are creative. You are capable. But now each of you will leave here today to join a larger world and dare it to stop, to make space, and discover your singular voice your first note. We, the world, we, we really need your voices. We need imagination. We need optimism. We need beautiful and brave creative spirits which can turn our barriers into bridges. And we need them really fast. In the tradition of commencement addresses, this is where I'm supposed to speak about 
the leap, that extraordinary leap in defiance of all fear to build your masterpieces. Or, <laughs> or the discovery of originality at the depths of despair and failure. But I've just Googled hours and hours of commencement addresses, so I'm gonna really skip over that part of the speech really fast. Instead, it's the inspiration in being alone, in being uncomfortable and detached, away from a phone or the internet, to think, to listen, to simply exist. This is the effort that I think is really important, this effort to be in the empty space where deeply unique and original thought resides. This is what is important as a creator, addressing how to enter and remain in this headspace without self-destructing and with the self-confidence to collaborate is a lifetime of difficulty. This is what I thought to share because I love I love creating art. Maybe it's a desire that borders on addiction. It is definitely an obsession. And whether you're a designer, a performer, scholar, musician, film, ma filmmaker, filmmaker, um, uh, <coughs> fine artist or craft, sorry, I need to get some water here. Um, you all know exactly what I mean. <clears throat> because we see something, all of us artists, we see something where there is nothing. And we just have to get it out. Ideas are thrilling and consistently they give me a high. But it's in the process of making art that I find refuge. It's in the face of life's fragility and incoherence, it's in the hands-on dirty work, that I find peace and I actually feel safe. The focus required gives order to my thoughts and my emotions, regardless of how fast they are racing, and I can discover the pace of my own heartbeat. At the start, the initial brainstorming, I don't, in fact, I can't listen to anyone even the voices that mean the most to me. And that's you, all of you parents and teachers, unfortunately. Everything is a distraction. Nietzsche reflects, or reflected, one must have chaos within to give birth to a dancing star. I love that. His words are a reminder that framing psychological and philosophical depth is not new. Messy passions mix with too many conflicting ideas. And if I speak of meaning too early, everything vanishes. It's like trying to take home an ocean wave by stuffing it into my pocket. Words can find and create their own change. Allowing internal turmoil to swirl and just work. Not defining, not defining specifics allows layers of significance larger than a single concept to arise. This is the magic of extreme focus. The edges of self are lost. Physicality and ideas merge seamlessly, even if it's in laddering ideas with others. Let me explain. I was really angry really mad when I started making sculpture, carving marble. Everywhere it was ugliness in my life. Divorce, a political job in DC, no money. Let me underscore that, no money. Life, my life, had fallen short of my expectations by age 30. And on top of that, it felt empty. This fact gave me the courage to make art and to be vulnerable. I was looking for a passion, a comeback, and enough bravery to expose something deeply meaningful. It was in this fragility that I found a strength. In this period, hitting, smashing, cutting, drowning the world with noise was the only way I could work. My entire body needed to be focused in the same direction. 
emotional energy was the tool. Even though I believed intellectual concepts to be more significant, I overwhelmed myself in the physicality, the doing. And this act left subconscious marks. The sculptures created endured an onslaught of such mental focus that they are so physically extreme, they defy the constraints inherent in their own materiality, meaning they don't look like stone anymore. And the unintentional marks convey the most significant insights. The deeply bruised marble crystals, these imperfections, they tell a story I can't find words to tell even today, so many years later. The physical work involved in the production healed me. A personal transformation was underway when I was buried in the thinking, but losing my body to the making. James Baldwin reflected, you think your pain, your heartbreak, are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. His words are a reminder the cost of being vulnerable is impossibly high, but it is a cost paid by so many. You will not be alone. Complex meaning resides in the space between well-worded explanations and feelings experienced deeply, irrevocably, and often without reason. Art is a language addressing the paradox, the layers, the inconsistencies, and the injustices in life. It is large enough to speak to the realities of simultaneous opposing truths. It is the intimate as the universal, the interior protecting the exterior, the line creating the plane, and so on and so on. This is what makes art a powerful language, a language without boundaries. And it takes focus to synthesize the associations made between seemingly disconnected elements. Frida Kahlo reflected, nothing is absolute. Everything changes, everything moves, everything revolves, everything flies and goes away. Her words are a reminder, no life is without change. And focus is not entered through the same doorway every time. After 9-11, I left New York City, as many did, moving back to California, overwhelmed by the vengeful human noise of the world. I spent hours walking on the beach. Engaging in the unknown is more important than describing sometimes. For some reason, I would strap my delicate sculptures into my car and drive them down to the tide pools or the beach under Huntington Pier. This is where I would video the ocean crashing around them, as you just saw. No explanation existed for why I would invite destruction after years of the most patient work. But this was the most significant act of creating a description of why would have tied the process to a single theme and limited actions. In not talking, not describing, I found anew the pace of my own heartbeat. Louise Bourgeois reflected, a spider is a repairer if you bash into a web of a spider. She doesn't get mad. She weaves and repairs it. Her words are a reminder Perseverance is strength. Creating the most fragile, quiet sculptures and allowing nature to overwhelm my effort, this process worked. Was it rational? Absolutely not. But I couldn't find dignity in human interaction in this period. Thinking alone and simply working, as Teresa Pollock suggests, 
any way it comes, I found a path through the not knowing, the uncomfortable, and thus a voice back to our larger world. This world where communities can be loud and confrontational and where it takes fortitude to launch collaborations. Embracing chaos is tricky. I'm sure many of you know that already. To hear your own voice clearly, authentically, and without distraction, while simultaneously inspiring and coordinating a myriad of other creative voices is a balance of respect and emotional self-control. Creating large events where art is the platform for the engagement of others, test abilities to stay vulnerable, open, and humble. Feel confident enough to give away your ownership, the me. Transplant I with we, selflessly, where significant works will be born. They will be bigger than yourself. Today, you share an anniversary. 500 years ago this month, May, Leonardo da Vinci departed, leaving with us his legacy of creativity, which continues to frame questions and present new solutions. Through his work, you inherit proof of the expanse that curiosity and imagination can and do travel. This is the gift of original minds and creative spirits. This too is your possibility. Take a moment to look around at those sitting next to you, surrounding you, and exhale. Think. <laughs> And in the stillness, catch each other's eyes. Because these are the people who pushed you to work any way it comes, who helped refine your messy creative outbursts, and who stretched you beyond what you, even you, imagined possible. Catch these eyes because they shared all the days culminating in today. These are the relationships that will be remembered from this day forward and will refine your future best. Congratulations, all of us here can't wait to experience how you reimagine our confused, uncertain, and fearful world, reinvigorating it with your power and the sound of your own heartbeats. Congratulations, class of 2019.